A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Mathematicians, welcome back to now walking amazing video. What, what? You don't know what what walk is? Well, it's it's currently just a game that I'm working on, little game, and it has been rated six out of nine by the New York Times. So you should definitely make sure to check it out. Pre-registration link down there in the description. So. Recently, I was taking a look at square roots and cube roots and the like, and there I was just curious about um, the nth root of n. Okay, we were using it at the university before the nth root of n. Okay, where n is element of the positive real numbers, also including zero. Now, what I was wondering is, um, well, what is the behavior of the nth root of n? So if we take a look at the first root of 1, which is just 1 to the 1 over 1 power, this is 1, okay? Then let's take a look at the square root of 2. Square root of 2 is round about 1 dot um, something, okay? 1 dot 1, 4, 1 dot 4, 1, I can't remember. I think 1 dot 4, 1. Um, okay, then next up, the cube root of 3. Okay, this is the value. Mm, okay, pretty close to the square root of 2. Now what about the... Uh, um, what was it called? No, um, I was thinking about the sensi 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 whatsoever. But um, what about the fourth root of four? Okay, fourth root of four, still pretty close to the cube root of three. Mm, fifth root of five. Oh, it's decreasing. Sixth root of six, even more decreasing. Uh, tenth root of ten, mm, even smaller. So somewhere between the square root of two, basically. Okay, so, so the first root of 1, um, increasing to the square root of 2. And then the cube root of 3, fourth root of 4, it starts decreasing. So for one of these values in between, and obviously n can also be um, 2.5, we have that there is some kind of maximum point. Okay, if you take a look at this simple behavior. And we want to find out what this maximum point is um, of our function that we have up here, of our mapping. Also, we're going to take a look at two other points which are um, very important to, to process what the behavior of this function right here is and then we are going to sketch the graph and I hope you are going to enjoy the video. Now, um, at first, how can we find the maximum of a function? Well, at first we need to define a function in and of itself. So, um, let's say let f of n be equal to the nth root of n. Or, in other words, this is n to the 1 over nth power. Okay, this right here is our function at the moment and we are going to restrict our domain a, a tiny little bit. So we are going to say, okay, um, our domain is from um, an element of the real numbers basically starting at 1. We can also say that, well, obviously we can just go to 10 because we know that some value in between of 1 and 10, there has to be a maximum in, in some kind of way if we just take a look at our little analysis that we did. Uh, did with four from alpha. Now, um, how can we find a maximum of function? Well, obviously differentiated. Okay, so what is the first derivative? F prime in n. Hmm. Okay, so we need to take the derivative of n to the one over nth power. This is obviously, uh, obviously just a chain rule, but um, for many people it's actually easier to rewrite n to the one over nth power as being e to the log of n to the 1 over n, bring the 1 over n to the front, giving us e to the 1 over n times the log of n. Okay, yeah, this right here is what we want to differentiate and for many people it's actually way easier to do so. So, so at first we are just going to take the outer derivative of e to the 1 over n times log of n, which is just going to preserve the exponential function in and of itself. And this exponential function is n to the 1 over n. Okay, and all of this multiplied by the inner derivative. Inner derivative being the derivative of 1 over n times log of n. Now if we were to differentiate this, well, we have a product obviously, so we need to make use of the product rule. So first let's, let's differentiate, for example, a log, log of n in the product rule, giving us 1 over n once again as the derivative, so 1 over n squared. And now we are going to leave log of n how it is, so plus log of n, 
Um, by the way, this is the natural log, okay, for you who don't know. And now we are going to differentiate 1 over n. 1 over n is um, n to the negative 1th power, so we are going to track the negative sign to the front because of power rule or whatever the fuck you call it. And then we are going to um, reduce the exponent by 1, giving us negative 2, meaning this is going to be over n squared. Well, this right here is the first derivative of our function. And what we are going to do now is we are going to set it equal to zero because we want to see where the slope of the function is equal to zero. At which point, okay? This is obviously at a maximum or at a minimum. Now, if this right here is equal to zero, well, when is it going to be equal to zero? Hmm. Okay, if either of the two is equal to zero. On our domain, we are going to, so, if you just take a look at our domain, only in the limit it could be equal to zero. For all other values it's not going to be equal to zero at all. So if you now take a look at limits here for example, or if you restrict our domain even more from 1 to 10, we are going to notice that this part right here must be equal to zero. Obviously. I mean in no other way it's going to be equal to zero, this n to the 1 over n. This just has to do with the exponential function because the exponential function only goes to zero if we have negative infinity up here, you can say, as a limiting property. It's not going to happen with our domain because we are looking for numbers that we can plug up here, doesn't happen. So when is this equal to zero? Well, this can be equal to zero, let's put it here, 1 over n squared minus log of n over n squared if well. Um, at first we are going to multiply both sides by n squared because n is not equal to zero it's not part of our domain at the moment. Meaning if we multiply it by n squared not equal to zero we are going to get 1 minus log of n must be equal to zero and well surprise surprise who would have guessed if you now add 1 on both sides you are going to get that 1 must be equal to log of n exponentiating both sides gives us that the maximum is at n being equal to e who would have thought that e is going to play a role here well <laughs> hooray yeah obviously it, it plays a role obviously because the maximum is kind of bit between 2 and 3 so it has to be some kind of special value. Obviously, e pops up everywhere. So this right here is our maximum value. Um, actually, we don't know if it's a maximum at the moment because, well, the only thing we know is that the first derivative is equal to e if we set it equal to zero. So in normal case, you would need to take the second derivative and check if this at e is less than zero, okay? But we are not going to do this, it's a lot of work. And if we just take a look at the graph and the properties of the exponential function being increasing on our interval, okay, at least for the time being in increasing up until e and then decreasing up until infinity, basically, we are going to notice that this right here has to be a maximum. There are probably other ways to check if this is the case. But yeah, we are just going to say that this right here is the maximum and we know that um, the e root of e is the biggest nth root of n you can find out there. Now we want to sketch the graph a tiny bit more and for this what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at um, basically um, outermost points of our function. Originally we defined n to be element of the positive three numbers including zero. Okay in my notation zero is included. So what about the behavior at zero? Now what is the zero root of zero? Well, zero root of zero is a bit weird. Um, it's kind of defined, honestly, because zero means um, it's, it's the limit as um, our n approaches zero. But this is in our case not possible because if we approach it from the left hand side, so from negative side, this doesn't work out because in the rears our square root is not defined for negative arguments. So this right here is um, more strictly speaking the limit as n approaches 0 plus of the nth root of n. Okay, this is what we need to take a look at basically. So just from the positive side of things. And now we can go through a bit of analysis. So the first thing we are going to do is rewrite it as what we have up here. So this is the limit as n approaches 0 plus of, hey, this is actually a very nice looking limit. How did I do that? e to the 1 over n times log of n. And our exponential function is continuous, meaning we can track the limit to the inside, meaning this is equivalent to saying we have the exponential function of the limit as n approaches 0 plus of um, log of n divided by n. 
And here it becomes a bit complicated. Um, I actually couldn't come up with a good argument, a very mathematical argument, to find out this very limit. Because um, in normal cases you say, okay, this is indeterminant, using L'Hopital we are going to get, okay, this right here is going to disappear, 1 over n. Limit as n approaches 0 plus of 1 over n is going to give you infinity, exponential function goes to infinity. But this is not the case here, this is actually not the case. So we are going to go with a more heuristic argument you could say, um, and under the condition that the whole limit is going to exist in and of itself, what we are going to do is we are basically going to break up the limit as the limit is as the um, top approaches 0 plus divided by the limit as the bottom approaches 0 plus, giving us overall, okay, log of n, when n approaches 0 plus, let's take a look at the graph real quick. Obviously, on, this, uh, on the branch of the logarithm, just a regular branch, we are going to get that our logarithm approaches negative infinity at the top, okay? So that's negative infinity divided by, and when n approaches 0 plus, this is just going to be 0 plus overall. 0 plus meaning that our n just takes positive values all the time, at all times here you could say. Now we have negative infinity divided by positive values. Heuristically speaking this is going to give us negative infinity overall. You could also go by the heuristic argument that 1 over 0 plus in the limit is the same as saying um, this basically corresponds to negative infinity times positive infinity. And negative infinity times positive infinity gives you negative infinity in the limit overall. I couldn't come up with a good argument, but I know that the limit needs to be zero, uh, negative in infinity or overall zero exponential function um, of negative infinity, you, you could say, gives you zero on the limit. Um, I was trying around with integrals a, a bit, trying to bound it, but um, this only succeeded partially. I got stuck a tiny little bit. So if you can come up with a very valid argument, then please leave um, some comment down there. Um, I would love to read through your comments and your mathematical arguments. But overall, doesn't matter the means here. We are playing engineer. I'm a woodworker now, so I can as well play engineer a at some point. This, this approach is basically e to the negative infinity, you could say. Okay, just in a little Gensel fusion here, meaning overall this goes to zero in the limit, zero plus at that. Okay, this right here is our limiting point at zero plus. Now what about n approaching infinity, for example? This is actually a nice problem that you get asked in in analysis one, when you first have limits, calculating the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of n. Obviously, positive infinity. So let's take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of, and we are going to rewrite the nth root of n as e to the 1 over n times log of n once again. We had to prove it using the binomial theorem back in the days. Um, that is actually a, a very cool thing you can do, okay? By saying that the nth root of n is always something if you just take a look at the values one plus some delta n, it's a sequence and then you are just going to e expand it using the binomial theorem in, in some kind of way. That's a very cool proof or we can make it easy on us and just make use of L'Hopital, meaning we are going to track the, uh, the, the limit into the exponential function because it's continuous. So limit as n approaches positive infinity of the log of n divided by n. And here we can make it very easy on us by using L'Hopital, turning this overall into the exponential function of the limit as n approaches infinity. And just like before, if we were to differentiate top and bottom separately, we're going to end up with 1 over n. If it approaches infinity overall. Uh, this is going to give us 1 over infinity, giving us 0. So overall, the limit of our exponential function is going to go to 1 overall. Yeah, and this is basically it. And as you were able to see, um, just um, what I was talking about before on our interval that we have here from 1 to infinity, it just doesn't happen in any kind of way that n to the 1 over n is going to approach 0, okay? Because you see that um, our exponential function actually approaches 1 in the process. 
And yeah, this is the limiting um, factor here basically. And if we were to draw this now, um, we are going to get something. Okay, this, this right here is going to be E. Okay, the, the E fruit of E, meaning our graph is going to look something like this overall, if this right here is one. And we can also verify this a bit more in Desmos if we just take a look at a nice looking graph like this one here. And this was actually a very fun problem and it took me a bit back to analysis at my university because we actually got this problem asked but we had to solve the limiting problem in a very different kind of way. And if you are interested in more problems like these, limits, calculus, analysis and a bit of higher mathematics, then I invite you to try out the contents of today's sponsor Brilliant who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now Brilliant is by far one of the best sources to learn something in the STEM field. If you are new to topics like calculus, analysis, maybe it's something in physics or chemistry, then the interactive learning concept could be the perfect fit for you. Interactive in the sense that you are going to use your own two hands, these two guys, I seriously hope that you still have two of these guys and your mouse to play around with their animations, graphics, with the graphs in general parameters of a function, to find out something about the behavior of a function asymptotically for example. But it doesn't stop there with graphs. They also have a huge geometry section which is going to guide you through the geometry of triangles, squares and other geometric figures very intuitively with their interactive learning concept. And during these courses you're going to go through a lot of exercises starting off with simple topics and getting gradually harder up until you get a good understanding of the topic at hand. And if you fail to get an answer right, that's not a problem at all. Because those courses have been created by experts in their field. And if you get something wrong, you can just take a look at the explanation and see what went wrong actually. Which is a pretty cool feature and I really enjoy this because I do a lot of mistakes. And I really like to read into why I did those mistakes and what the right answer is going to be. So that's also a pretty nice feature that I really enjoy. And if you also want to try it out for yourself, if you think that this could fit your STEM needs, then definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description brilliant.org slash maths. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already, but more importantly the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a freaking great deal considering how much content they have available on their website. Over 60 interactive courses which is absolutely brilliant, pun definitely intended. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. Don't forget to check out stemage.eu and also WAC. And until the next video I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!